Welcome to this lesson on introduction to forces that act at a distance in the series on Newton's law of universal gravitation. We start with a look at the effect of attraction due to magnetism and gravity. Magnets can attract iron and other ferromagnetic materials to it over a distance. Electrostatic forces also affect this ball, even though it isn't touching any charged object, and objects will fall to the ground because of the Earth's gravitational field. As a matter of fact, gravitational force attracts every material particle in the universe. We are particularly interested in gravitational force and will look at the law in a moment. Legend has it that Sir Isaac Newton sat under an apple tree and asked himself the question, why does an apple fall down and not up? To answer this question, he came up with the concept of a gravitational field. Basically, the idea is that an invisible force field surrounds all material objects. In other words, that a force field surrounds everything that has mass and that this force field attracts other objects. We call the region around an object in which a particle or other object experiences an attractive force towards it due to its mass, the object's gravitational field. The gravitational field of an object pulls other particles or objects towards its center of mass. So the gravitational field of the Earth pulls things down towards the center of the Earth. On the Earth's surface, the gravitational field strength, G, is 9,81 newtons per kilogram. So what does this mean for us? Well, it means that we can calculate the force of the Earth on a one kilogram packet of apples by taking its mass one kilogram and multiplying it by the Earth's gravitational field strength, G. So an object such as a one kilogram packet of apples will be pulled towards the Earth with a force of 9,81 newtons. The concept of an invisible force field, like the gravitational force field, is represented with lines that show the direction in which the force acts. Gravitational field lines always point towards the center of mass of the object. The work which Sir Isaac Newton did on gravitational force has helped astronomers predict and explain the motion of planets in our solar system and in the wider universe too. His law of universal gravitation gives us a way of calculating the force of attraction acting on any two objects in the universe. Let's see what the law says. Every two particles in the universe attract each other with a gravitational force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart. This is quite a long statement and it contains some very powerful ideas. Let's unpack what it means. Firstly, it states that every two particles in the universe attract each other. The word particles here refer to even the smallest speck of matter which have mass. But of course, the law applies to all matter. Larger objects are just made up of millions and millions and millions of mass particles packed together. Let's continue to unpack Newton's law of universal gravitation. It further says that the force of attraction between particles or objects is directly proportional to the product of the masses of the particles or objects. This means that the greater the mass of an object is, the greater its force of gravity will be. So, if you double the mass of one object, you double the gravitational force exerted on these two particles. And if both of their masses are doubled, the gravitational force increases fourfold. Practically, we can illustrate this by looking at a simple example. A ball is attracted by the Earth's gravitational field. Because it has so much less mass than the Earth, it will fall down towards the Earth if you let it go. Let's investigate what the law says about the distance between particles. The law states that the gravitational force of attraction is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the particles. So basically, as the distance between the particles increases, the force of gravity decreases. This decrease depends on the square of their distance apart. If the distance is doubled, the force decreases to one quarter of its original magnitude. This is an inverse square relationship. It may be helpful to plot a graph of force as distances increase to understand this more clearly. Do you see how the force drops off very quickly as the distance is increased? Can you think of examples where this knowledge could be useful? Think about air and space travel. 
This information means that although it takes quite an effort initially to escape the force of the Earth's gravitational field, the size of this force rapidly reduces and a rocket or airplane will require much less power to stay up in the air as it moves further and further away from the Earth. Now, Newton's law of universal gravitation can also be written as an equation. F is equal to the constant g times the product of the masses of the two objects and divided by the square of their distance of separation. The constant g is called the universal gravitational constant. It applies to all masses anywhere within our universe, hence the title, the universal gravitational constant. Its magnitude is 6,7 times 10 to the power of negative 11 newton meters squared per kilogram squared. We can use this formula to calculate the force of attraction between the Earth and, say, an elephant. The Earth has a mass of 6 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. The elephant has a mass of 1,000 kilograms. Their centers of mass are separated by one Earth's radius, which is 6,4 times 10 to the power of 6 meters. The force of the Earth on the elephant is given by 6,7 times 10 to the power of negative 11 times the mass of the Earth and times the mass of the elephant, all over the radius of the Earth, all squared. When we work this out, we find that the Earth attracts the elephant with a force of about 10,000 newtons. Does this seem familiar to you? What do you think an elephant weighs? Yes, it weighs about 10,000 newtons, which is also the magnitude of the force of the Earth on the elephant. When we calculate the force of the Earth on an object on Earth, we are actually finding its weight. When we talk about the gravitational field strength of the Earth, we are actually talking about its acceleration due to gravity. These values and their names are interchangeable. Newton's law of universal gravitation applies to all objects in the universe. Gravitational fields are associated with all objects with mass. Therefore, the stars and moons and planets also all have gravitational fields. We know that our moon's gravitational field is about one-sixth as strong as that on Earth. That is why astronauts feel lighter on the moon, using the same amount of energy they can jump higher on the moon than they can on Earth, and they fall back to the moon at a slower rate than they do on Earth. Now that you've looked at Newton's universal law of gravitation, maybe you can apply your knowledge in our task video by attempting the questions. The task video and other relevant videos can be found on the Mindset Network at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Take care and goodbye.